introduction. My name is Jude, and I'm presenting a new hashing based nearest neighbor selection technique for big data set. So, this is my outline. Firstly, I'll talk about k nearest neighbor and the problem with k nearest neighbor, and after I will introduce some background works on NN, and after I'll show the proposed method and the result of our experiment. So, k nearest neighbor is a simple and powerful supervised learning algorithm. And as shown in this picture, imagine that we have a data set of three categories. So, to select the k nearest neighbor, first we, we have to compute the distance from like our new data point to all the data point. And after we can we can look at the distance and see what are our nearest neighbor. And to classify this like this new query point, we just look at the category of the selected nearest neighbor and we we can we will make a kind of voting system in order to 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 in order to like to make a decision of a new category so <clears throat> as we can see the KNN algorithm like the bridge force version suffer from two main issues which are we have the slowness and the memory issue at each decision decision making we have to like at each decision making, we have to process uh, the entire data set before we can select the KNN. And a human, by looking at the, at the 2G or 3G vector space of a data space, can intuitively get the nearest neighbors of a data, data point. But for, for a computer, we need like more calculation for doing the same task. So some solutions are proposed for like for reducing the complexity and the memory issue. And one simple solution is that is like data reduction approaches. The idea is reduce the size of the training data set. And by reducing the size, I mean like we can reduce the number of instances or the future dimension. And <clears throat> It reduces the number of distance calculation and the model memory size. Since when we use scanning algorithm, we need to carry out the entire data set even during prediction. So one simple, ex <coughs> one simple example of data reduction technique, we can like talk about the concave and, and the convex hull technique. Here the idea is that if you have a data set and we have different categories, we can like take one category, like the data point belonging to one category and reduce this data set on only the age data point. And for future dimension, we can use techniques such as PCA to reduce the number of feature of the data set. But usually the data reduction approaches lead to a drop in accuracy. And after we have three base solution, three base solution organize the training, training data as a, like a tree. And we're searching for the nearest neighbor, we, we navigate the tree from the top to bottom, hoping that the region we will lead in will contain the nearest neighbor of our query point. And as example, we have KG3 and Pearl3. So yeah, I'm going to show how KG3 works. Imagine if we have this data point and we want to build a tree in, in order to like to select our nearest neighbor. Firstly, KG3 will randomly select one attribute. Here we have two attribute data set. Let's say we select the X attribute. And from the X attribute, we take the medium, the median of, of this attribute in the original data set. And here we have like um, our median, which is M1. The idea is to split the data set into two equal sub data set using this attribute. So we compare each data point with this attribute and we split half of the data set on the, on the left side and half on the right side. And after for each sub like sub node 
for each left and right node, we are going to repeat the same process until we end up with a tree. So during query, like if you want to query a new data point, we will just take the data point and compare each attribute and until we lead to a sub region that will hopefully contain our potential nearest neighbor. And we have to note that this technique is not perfect because we can easily miss the real nearest neighbor. And it's not guaranteed that the region that we will lead in will contain like the true nearest neighbor. And the three size will never exceed log base two of n. So this helps to reduce the complexity from linear to logarithmic. After the three based solution, we have hashing based solution. So let's define what is a hash function. A hash function is any function that shows to map a data to arbitrary size, uh, arbitrary size of fixed size value. The value I use, the value I usually use to index a fixed type table called the hash table. So imagine here we have some value and we want to map this value to bucket. Here we have seven bucket. Here the hash function we use is the mode operator. So we can use the mode operator and generate some index and this index are the hash keys. And this index will help to map the input value to the one bucket of our hash table. So this is typically a simple hashing technique. And how can we apply this technique in like in KNN problem in order to select our KNS neighbor? So the first, like the first and and the most popular example or uh, solution existing is called local sensitivity sensitive hashing. The idea is that first we have to define a, a hyperparameter k. So when k is defined, we are going to split, we are going to randomly split our data space using some hyperplane and here in two dimensional this is going to be some straight line. So k in this figure k is is three. So we randomly split the region of our data space using this K line and yeah, here we are. So each region, each region is going to represent the bucket for our hash function, something like this. So during query, what, what we do is that we are going to compare our new data point with each line and find the region where the region where our our, our potential k kn uh, data point are located in and if we find this region we are going to only consider the data point data in this region to select our k nearest neighbor and also using this technique there's no guarantee that the region we will like we will get will have our real nearest neighbor. As in this example, as shown in this example, our query point is in this region, but the actual real like nearest neighbor point is in another region. So we will have some data points here, but these are some approximation and they are not the real nearest neighbor. So <clears throat> what is the aim of this research? The aim of this research is to allow, uh, to, to develop a new methodology that will allow us to quickly look in the neighborhood of an observation to see if we can quickly find some, some data point or not. So our grid <coughs> hashing based nearest neighbor selection technique mainly has two phases. First, we have the cell sampling phase and this happened during training. The idea is to div like to split the data space into subcell by bridging on top of it a virtual grid. And after we use a hash function to map each training data point to the corresponding subcell. 
and after building the virtual the virtual grid during like prediction we use a process that we call exploration to select like to select our our potential data point that like yeah the potential nearest neighbor data point so the exploration phase yeah have main have lead to step first we define the subset to which the query data point belongs to using the mouse mapping hash function and after we search for nearest neighbor from from these central cells and cell in it neighborhoods layer by layer as shown in in figure c so how do we build our virtual grid in order to show that like in order to to make sure that the data is well distributed on each cell and that is not going to instead uh, be harmful for the algorithm performance and accuracy for it we propose a sampling mechanism and this mechanism will decide on the cell measurement on each dimension so first like the sampling mechanism idea is to divide the value range covered by the training data point on each on each on each dimension in the largest possible number of split in a way that each split end up with at least one data point so what does this mean this means that on each dimension let's say Let's say, yeah, on each dimension, imagine on the X dimension. First, we want, we, we, we are going to define like, to, to check the, the, the range of the data set on this dimension, like the minimum and the maximum. So the idea is to split this range in a way that each split, like end up with at least one data point. And, and this process, we, for our implementation, we adopted a brute force approach. So imagine we have n data point. This region cannot be split in more than, like it cannot have more than n split. So we start with n split and we, we split this region into n parts and we check each sub region to see if it is empty or not. And if one sub, one sub region is empty, we decrease the number of split to n minus one and we repeat the same process until we find the optimal number of split on the dimension. So when we find the, like, this, the, the optimal number of split, we are going to divide this number with the value range to find the cell dimension, like the cell measurement on this dimension. And after we repeat the same process for the other dimension and yeah, in the end, having the, the same measurement on each dimension, we can easily define our virtual grid. And yeah, and when we have the cell measurement for each data point in the data space, to map the data point to, to one specific cell, we use this hash function. Uh, yeah, our hash function is the integer division. And the idea is to take the data point and divide it and divide it to the cell measurement. And this will give us a unique ID. And this ID will hold some data point and, and some data point. And this ID also represents a cell ID of like a cell ID in the in a virtual grid. So when we define the virtual grid with the cell measurement during uh, during prediction what we do is that for the new data point p here we are going to get the central cell id just by doing the integer division with with the cell measurement and it will give us the id of this cell and having this cell we can retrieve the data point from from, yeah, having this cell, you can retrieve the data point from this cell 
and after we compute the idea of cell of the cell around around it. So imagine that the since we have two dimension, this cell ID is zero zero. Using the depth first or breadth first session technique, we can compute the idea of this cell, like the cell on the first layers, and collect their data point. And after we can also compute the cell on the like the idea of the cell on the second layer and collect their data point. And this can allow us to quickly look at like look to quickly look in the neighborhood of a given data point and to see if we have some data, like some nearest neighbor data point or not. So yeah, to select the data point, we use a heap sort mechanism, like the, the heap sort maximum size is, the, like the heap maximum size is K. And every time we visit a cell, we add the, we add the data point to the heap and when we visit a layer and and the heap is not updated, we know that we have our k nearest neighbor. We stop the exploration and and here we are. So this is the the workflow of our technique during training. We have the data set and we simple we build the virtual grid. We build the virtual grid and we have the cell information. This will give us the train model. So during prediction, we get a new data point. We compute the central cell. And after we explore the neighbor cell and we select the KNN. So once the KNN are selected, it depends on the stocks. We can make a classification by voting, or make a regression by just taking the mean or median of the selected KNN values. So what is the complexity of, of our output? Firstly, we count the cell on each layer and we define N, which is the cell on each layer. So from the, from actually like the central cell to the layer number L, imagine if we want to query uh, a canon of, of, of a query point and and to get this KNN, we, we explore L layers in a vector space of dimension F. So with the, with the depth of the exploration and the future dimension, we can define the number of, of visitors which is equal to 2L plus one or F minus one. So from this, we define the complexity, which is O of this and with L less or equal to N. N is the number of data points and according to our simple mechanism, L cannot like, the depth of the exposure cannot exceed N. So in the best, the best case complexity is obtained by setting L equal to one and which is, and this is almost constant. And the, in the worst case complexity, we have O on like, which is obtained by setting L equal to N and we have O of two N plus one power F. And this is almost equal to N power F. And actually compared to solutions such as uh, KGT and other existing methodology, this complexity like this worst case complexity seems to be uh, not that inst interesting, but the, the most interesting aspect of our mechanism is that it can be like we can control the, we can control the processing budget. Since the complexity depends on the depth of the exploration, we can control this and combine our mechanism with different existing approach such as Imagine we have a data set and instead of using KG3 to select the nearest neighbor among many data points, first we can use our approach to look in the first layer or second layer of, of the neighborhood of our data point and see if we can find some potential nearest neighbor. And if not, so we can switch to a different 
uh, nearest neighbor uh, selection mechanism for yeah for making uh, the processing much more efficient. So for our experimentation, we use five data sets, and uh, our two metric was our two metrics are the prediction time and the accuracy score. The first data set was the MNIS, the fashion MNIS, uh, which is an image data set of where each image is, has a size of uh, 28 by 28 and a 10 class classes. For the MNIS data set is also like the the, the, the real MNIST data set. This one is a handwritten digit data set and it has 10 classes and the image are of the same size. And after we use the pulsar star data set, and uh, this pulsar star just described a, a sample of pulsar candidate collected during a high time resolution universe server. It has each continuous variable and the target is, is is binary and and the target say if uh, if the instance is a pulsar or not. And after we have we use the wine quality data set and this data is about various chemical combination of red one. It has eleven attributes and a quality score between zero and ten. And the last data set was the Russian demographic. It contained demographic feature like nat natural population growth, birth rate, population, and so on. In total, it has six attributes and the target is also binary. And we need to see if the instance is urbanized or not. So, uh, after training, we got this accuracy, and and uh, according to to this figure, we can see that uh, since our approach and KG3 can sometimes miss the real the real nearest neighbor, sometimes the the accuracy uh, is not equal to the one of of the KNN, but compared to KG3, our our, our solution is better because in some data set like fashion MNIS and um, fashion MNIS and Russian demography, it gives it gives more accuracy since uh, since it means like it means less it less lessly miss nearest neighbor down KG3. And also we can yeah, yeah, and also we evaluate like the prediction time of each method, each methodology, on each data set, and we presented it on the next figure. Yeah. So according to this figure, we can see that the brute, the brute force KNN algorithm is too slow compared to KG3 and our approach. And when we compare our approach to KG3. On image data set, KG3 seems to be better than our approach. As we can see on fashion MNIS and MNIS, KG3 is, is faster. And on, on dense feature data set, our, our approach seems to be faster than KG3. Yet, for image data set, we can explain it by the fact that image is like, it is a very high dimensional vector because we take an image, we flatten the pixel, and we make our our input input vector. So even though we use a PCA to reduce the like the number of dimension of each images, still the the vector is high dimensional and we end up in something called the curse of dimensionality. And uh, and yeah, but 
we do think if we couple our approach with KG3, we can even obtain better performance than what we have here. And these are the evaluation results. And thank you.